This story began in Moscow, Russia in 1969, when my mom introduced me to a man who would become my stepfather. I was 10 years old, and my life consisted of chasing soccer balls in the summer and hockey pucks in the winter. I was training myself to become the best athlete the Soviet system could produce. I never suspected that when we would leave Russia and settle in the United States that his world would become my life story. In 1976, I saw my first ballet class. For those of you who don't know much about dance or ballet, I can only say ballet is probably the most complex of human movements. It is also graceful, athletic, and requires near perfect facilities. It also requires training, skill, dedication and countless repetitions on each and every conceivable human movement and undulation. When I watched my first ballet class, I didn't see any goals being scored, but as an athletic boy with vivid imagination, I was curious to try it. To me, ballet represented an almost unsurmountable challenge. I was 17 years old, way too old to start dancing. I had a wrong body type, no flexibility in the feet, short legs, long torso, and the list of physical deficiencies just grew with every exercise. But my stepfather, besides being a brilliant dancer, he was also a brilliant teacher. And somehow or other, he managed to transform me, an awkward, gangly teenager, to a professional dancer. I received my training at the School of American Ballet, and I danced in Europe, United States, and toured with many Broadway musicals. There is a saying amongst dancers that if you wake up in the morning and nothing hurts, that means you're dead. That is so true. I longed for the days when my movement wasn't accompanied by a word disorder. In 2007, I was diagnosed with early onset of Parkinson's disease. Nothing in my life prepared me for such devastating news, but as luck would have it, my training, dancing, and teaching would play an enormous role in what happened next. You can say that my life's second act is a lot more dramatic than my first. In 1992, I began to teach ballet, just like my stepfather. I was fortunate to work at some of the most prestigious ballet schools and in many professional ballet companies all over the world. I'm still teaching, but these days, my 40 years of dancing and dance education allow me to teach not only ballet, but has guided me to develop Parkinson's on the Move program. It's a program that my wife and I created to help people with Parkinson's. People like me. It's a comprehensive program that gives people the necessary tools to reclaim, revive, and maintain their movements that have been compromised due to Parkinson's disease. Having PD and being a former dancer and dance educator allows me to offer the kind of personal guidance that would be impossible without the first-hand experience of living with Parkinson's disease. To me, human movement is a vocabulary of subtle clues, but a movement disorder is an indication that something or some parts of the body are in need of help or correction. I see where the weakness of the nerve signals are causing problems and I find ways to redirect that neural pathway to stimulate different muscles in order to achieve a more natural movement. I have spent the last 10 years living with Parkinson's disease while attempting to perfect everything about my own life. I eat better, I exercise daily, work full-time as a teacher and choreographer, and with my wife we run Parkinson's on the Move website. Take a look at our website and compare it to any PD-related service. Our goal is to make you as healthy as possible starting right now. You just have to take the first step and give it a try. We will give you what we believe are the best tools alongside practical advice, complemented by pertinent information and timely guidance. You don't have to be a dancer to join us, but who knows, in a few months, you may want to dance because you want to, or because you need to, or because you can't. 